那我们有请最后一位演讲嘉宾伊礼先生。很谢谢你，呃，我叫伊礼，我的中文名字是伊礼，呃，我不单是亚洲银行家的主持人，呃，而且我是呃财富与社会的创始人，呃，我来北京很久，但是我还没来来过呃东东九。呃，今天是今天是第一次来北呃东州，我不知道东州非常漂亮，呃，所以我下次回来东州，我要呃看一看东州的风景怎么样。呃，让我说英文一下。呃 ，I am very happy to be here. 呃 ，and as I was preparing for today's session, um, I thought a lot about uh, the experience I've had uh, in the fund management industry, in the wealth management industry, especially in Singapore and in Hong Kong, where I come from. Uh, I remember when the fund management industry in Singapore was just uh, starting out in the 1990s, many foreign fund managers uh, used to come into Singapore and try to influence the regulators uh, to liberalize the domestic pension fund industry. Uh, and that was in the 1990s. Uh, in the same way, uh, when the fund managers from the more developed Western countries uh, came to Hong Kong, uh, they had their eyes set on uh, the mandatory pension fund in Hong Kong. Uh, and today, uh, as I'm participating in this um, panel discussion, uh, we are at a time when many foreign fund managers are beginning to apply for licenses to be wholly owned uh, entities to compete in the Chinese uh, fund management uh, marketplace. But there is a huge difference uh, between the entry into Singapore and Hong Kong in the 1990s and in the 2000s and the entry into China today. Uh, the fund management industry in China is crowded. Uh, there are thousands of players already in the marketplace. I tried to get a number for the hedge fund industry uh, and uh, I could see numbers between anything between 15,000 and 75,000, which is probably not quite likely, but I was very intrigued uh, that there are many uh, fund managers that like to call themselves hedge fund uh, in China. Um, any foreign player entering the Chinese market today uh, will be confronted by a robust domestic market, but both foreign and local Chinese players are confronted by new technological challenges that are creating new realities that all of us have to come to terms with. And I'd like to share with you some very simple points about these new realities. In other words, uh, the way in which the wealth management industry, the fund management industry in China evolves in the next 10 to 20 years will be an example, not just to China, but also to the rest of the world. I just recently published my first book, uh, The Great Transition, The Personalization of Finance is Here. A lot of what I've written in my book uh, is about uh, the impact of technology in finance. In fact, uh, Richard Sandor, who uh, we heard just now, uh, wrote one of the two forwards in my book, and the other forward was written by, um, by Barney Frank, uh, who is the co-author of the most important reg regulation in the US called the Dodd-Frank Regulation. Um, and uh, my book is uh, gaining a lot of credibility in the US, uh, but it's a very difficult process because the banking and finance industry um, is divided between the traditionalists who want to uh, protect what they have already created uh, and the disruptors who are trying to change the rules. So let me share with you just some very three very simple principles about the impact of technology in finance. Um, the first principle I'd say is that Technology is not a competitive advantage. Technology is a necessity. All of us will need to have uh, to be on platforms. Uh, all of us will need to build uh, robust and agile technology infrastructure. 
but none of this gives any player an advantage over another player in this marketplace. Um, what technology does, the second point, is that it commoditizes financial services. In other words, it makes financial services cheaper to the point that anyone can provide financial services and anyone can com compete in financial services. So your competitor may not be another big player. Your competitor might be uh, the small player uh, in, in a small town uh, around the corner from your branch uh, in that town. Um, the third thing that technology does is that it levels the playing field, meaning that uh, it makes the big player and the small player equally important uh, in the local marketplace. Now, if it levels the playing field, then the, um, the, this, there's this phrase in English called the value proposition or the benefit that you give to your marketplace has to be something other than the technology. Now, the fourth point I want to make is that technology shifts the power of the relationship from the institutions that provide them to the end user. In other words, because of technology, your customer is more powerful than you. And it's becoming increasingly more powerful over time. In the US, in, the 20, in 2022, uh, there was this big um, uh, crisis where retail investors getting together uh, on a platform called Reddit were able to uh, put together so much good opinion on, on what they thought the value of certain stocks were. Okay, um, there, there were stocks on, there was a, tel there was a cinema company stock uh, which the institutional short sellers were trying to, uh, to short sell. Uh, and the retail investors came back and pushed the institutional uh, short sellers back. Um, so in other words, the customer today is, or the user of financial services is, is able uh, to push back on the institutional um, players. So we need to take into account uh, these dramatic forces that are transforming financial services today. So even as we think about the future of financial services, which are relevant to each of us here in this room uh, as institutions, we need to add that one other component, which is the power of the end user, and especially the power of the end user uh, being able to group together uh, to create uh, their reaction uh, to markets, to funds, uh, to the products that you, um, that you are, are creating. Um, and all of this means one very important thing, which we haven't been able to imagine yet. Uh, and that is also something that I say in my book, which is that uh, if the products don't change, nothing changes in financial services. So we can talk about technology, we can talk about infrastructure, we can talk about the customer, but then we need to start looking at our products again. Because if you think of a fund as a product or a hedge fund as a product, uh, that's not what the customer wants to buy. Uh, in fact, um, my colleague just now was talking about, uh, about the fact that uh, the, the asset itself is becoming um, intangible. Uh, there's something in what he said just now, which is that uh, that should lead us to think of how we need to revolutionize our products itself. So these are my points.